sounds like uh, we're get started. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Jim and Peter from Kaleido. Really uh, great to uh, be back on the Global Forum, uh, this exciting annual event of everybody from all over the world that care about blockchain, especially uh, its adoption in the enterprise use cases. So today, we'd like to talk about uh, privacy in particular. So let me. OK, so the agenda is two parts. We'd like to first spend a few minutes just to recap on the current techniques today and each addressing this different aspect of uh, privacy. And then the second part, we'd like to take a look at uh, the evolving uh, multi-party systems and see if there's a framework uh, that can tie them together and through plugins to uh, bring all these different techniques together into a coherent system. So when you build your solutions, you might use different pieces uh, uh, depending on your specific requirements. So you don't have to hunt down individual uh, technologies um, uh, yourself. So uh, starting with um, sort of the lay of the land uh, in terms of privacy techniques that are being used when you are building a multi-party system uh, from, with the foundation on the blockchain. Um, obviously, you can create in separate instances of blockchain, so data and identity is completely isolated. If you're not part of this chain, then uh, you don't know what's going on. Uh, you can use techniques that mask your submitters, uh, transaction submitters' identity, uh, either using uh, true random or pseudo random uh, keys to sign the transaction, so they look like they come from completely random parties. Uh, but you can uh, hold the uh, uh, the master key uh, to all of them, uh, so that your trading pattern would not be leaked. Uh, and then you can have off chain communications, so. Uh, your sensitive data or uh, kind of business data that's very key to your business competitive edge are transferred to your parties off the chain. So it's not a broadcast to everybody, and you keep your private data private. Um, and then in these green boxes, we, we see uh, emerging technologies that are utilizing more advanced cryptography in terms of produ producing zero knowledge proofs, using a trusted uh, compute on the uh, special hardware or using multi-party compute uh, to make the output uh, collaborative, but no one has the whole secret. So let's take a quick look of uh, each of them uh, in more details. Um, this is obviously uh, very easy to understand. If you create different instances of blockchains, then obviously both the data and the transactions are completely separate. Uh, it's worth mentioning that technologies like uh, Hyperledger Fabric makes this much easier uh, with their channel technology so that on the same network with the same set of identities, you can create multiple, essentially multiple instances of blockchains called channels uh, with its own governance model, its own permissioning uh, configurations. And if you're not part of a channel, you have no idea what's going on inside that channel. Next, uh, we have uh, private transactions where we're all utilizing a same shared uh, ledger with the same permissioning model. But on a transaction by transaction basis, I can choose who my transactional uh, counterparties are. And the true uh, payload for the real transactional data is sent uh, between those parties um, in off-chain channels directly sometimes in encrypted format. And the blockchain in this case is utilized to, number one, uh, identify that a transaction has happen, have happened off chain. So there's a representation of that, usually in the form of a hash that represents the transaction payload. It's sent to the chain. So everybody on the chain is um, paying the duty of uh, protecting that transaction's data commitment on the chain but the actual uh, data is only communicated among the parties involved in the transaction. Um, 
And, and so that's about protecting the payload of the transaction. So what about protecting the, the identity uh, of the transaction submitter? In certain use cases, you don't want your sort of trading pattern to be analyzed by your competitors on the same chain. Uh, so you want to uh, protect your submission, uh, your submission's uh, identity, signing identity. Um, in certain chains, this, this is more uh, easily accomplished than other chains, depending on whether uh, uh, what kind of permissioning model is utilized, whether you are able to use random signing keys to sign transaction, then be still allowed to submit. The idea is um, I can, you just go ahead and use complete random uh, transaction signing keys, but then you have to keep track of uh, each of them. So that's a pretty big headache and overhead. Or you can use uh, this technique using key derivation so that a single uh, master secret can be used to generate you know, billions of derived keys that you know, to the outside world looks completely random, even though they are all generated from the same key. Um, then we talk about two um, uh, off-chain communication uh, technologies. You, Sometimes you just want to send some uh, structured data or a smaller piece of JSON from one party to another. Uh, app to app messaging, uh, it's a pretty uh, popular technique, uh, even though there are different implementations by different vendors. It's usually backed by an um, uh, enterprise grade uh, uh, queue so that data can uh, trans, uh, transfer from one party to another without getting lost, even if the receiver uh, at the time is not uh, online. So using Kafka or other uh, queuing technologies um, uh, and then utilize uh, encryption, uh, you have uh, a data that's transformed, uh, transferred uh, among parties reliably and securely. This is very similar document uh, exchange uh, from one party to another. It's not um, small and structured data anymore. It's uh, you know arbitrary large files uh, that needs to be chunked into smaller pieces to travel through the secure pipe with the queue uh, and then in encrypted format. And then on the other hand, on the other side, uh, they are taken off the queue and. Uh, decrypted and then put together into the file again. Uh, and then uh, on to the more advanced uh, technologies using uh, more advanced uh, cryptography. Now we're talking about, so if when you put all of your processing logic on chain, uh, it's pretty difficult to protect it uh, from, um, uh, from leakage because number one, everybody will see that uh, if it's uh, uh, if it's stored on the chain, and uh, data because because the processing logic is on chain, the data itself itself must be on chain as well. So what if we take both the processing and data off the chain and make it happen somewhere else? But now you have the burden of proving to all the parties on the chain that you haven't cheated. Right. If you are spending $100, then your transaction is deducting $100 from your account. You didn't cheat by deducting only $50 and claim you have deducted $100. So how do you, how do you prove to everybody that you've done this transaction uh, honestly? So there are two techniques. One is using a cryptography of generating a proof that I've done this particular uh, computation uh, and this is the proof that uh, I've carried out that computation according to the, to the claim. The other technique is you can sort of lock all this logic and data into a secure place so no one can see it. Not even the administrator of that chip can see it. But you can ask the chip, did you just do perform a, uh, a, a transaction that did this? And the chip through its attestation interface can tell you yes or no. And with this, you're basically trusting the chips manufacturer and, and the cryptography uh, applied to this technique uh, that uh, all the computations are done uh, correctly. So that is called uh, trusted execution environment. 
So with all these techniques, it's pretty exciting that uh, you are able to use these for, you know, depending on your uh, specific requirements. Uh, but, you know, using each of them is, is hard enough. You know, think about generating the zero knowledge proofs, think about creating the off-chain channels that are reliable, that are utilizing end-to-end -end encryption. Doing all of that is is like doing at least some of that is necessary to create a real world enterprise uh, blockchain based solution. So now it get us thinking: uh, What if we have a framework that makes all of this easier? What if uh, we have a framework that has out of box support for some of this, and then have plugin systems to to support? Um, uh, future technologies that may be developed. So we don't have to understand them individually. We just stay within the network and they all get plugged into it uh, in the future. So now we're, uh, I'm very excited to uh, talk, to uh, introduce to you guys Firefly. And this is really uh, a multi-year evolution uh, within the Kaleido team. Uh, and now it's part of uh, Hyperledger Labs. In fact, uh, seven individual uh, code repositories encompassing, I, I think, tens of thousands of lines of code just landed today uh, in the Hyperledger Labs repository. And we're very excited to share this with you. Um, <clears throat> the previous generation that's also in production with many of, uh, of our customers were written by our awesome engineer, Gabriel Indic. And the new generations have, have taken all the lessons we've learned from the deployment, from building the solutions for our customers. And we have a, a, a more uh, efficient, a better architected uh, framework that's now contributed to um, Hyperledger. So now I'm going to introduce you guys to Peter Broadhurst, our head of engineering and um, uh, the creator of Firefly. Thank, thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, so I guess 75,000 lines of code, I think, drops, dropped as the seed contribution for, for this. Um, uh, and it's, um, I, I think, a significant um, uh, gap that, that's being addressed um, in, in what we really are striving to be a, um, a vibrant, open community um, here. To, to solve the real problem, the elephant in the room for blockchain. How can you make it useful for building enterprise use cases? There is no enterprise use case that doesn't have private private data. There is no enterprise use case that's just uh, you know an on-chain NFT um, uh, on its on its own in isolation. It, it, it's an enterprise use case because it integrates with the hundred plus years of innovation on the business side that's happening between these large organizations coming together to form a business ecosystem. And um, we've seen over and over again the same journey being taken by, by business networks. Um, the, 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 the start of the journey, it's the same feeling, right? Surely what we need to do is we need to write some smart contracts. We'll write some smart contracts that will, that's where we'll focus our time. And I'm sure like, you know, four to six months, we'll have a use case and we'll be deployed. And um, the reality, and, and, and you're, you're almost certainly this is familiar to, to everybody here, is that actually you find designing how blockchain fits into what you're actually building, which is trying to digitize an industry through collaboration. What you're actually building is trying to build a multi-party system, um, where that little kernel of on-chain logic fits, it's, it's not the whole problem, it's just a piece of the puzzle. And actually, the time, the effort, the energy, the resource, the collaboration, um, over many years we see, um, if you start from scratch, goes into the plumbing goes into the integration with your core systems, goes into reconciling data formats and the differences between all of the hundreds of years of business evolution that's happened separately across these organizations and combining it together. And actually, the number of projects that can get through that show business value quickly enough, quickly enough to really keep the 
interest, the motivation, the project alive. It's it, it's not easy to do nowadays. It's it's a um, it, it, the, the getting stuck in the plumbing just seems to be so common. And we we're lucky, right? We we were able to we've been able as as one of the sort of um, players in the industry that tries to sort of focus on this particular problem, sort of fish people out of the lake when, when they've been stuck for multiple years and, and get them forwards. Now, we don't think that that is enough for um, multi-party systems, so blockchain and all of the other technologies that are about allowing systems to collaborate in a different way to how they have done in the past. We don't think it's enough to just have a company that's there trying to help individual companies. We think that we, the industry can achieve 100 times more things. We can have a, an order of magnitude more projects being successful in the blockchain space if we have a comprehensive open source project. That means regardless of your technology choice, you can come, you can model your business process, you can get your glue off the shelf, the, the plumbing works, you can take existing skills, fantastic developers who now know how to build mobile apps, great user experiences, fantastic business APIs. You can take organizations with their own distinct core systems and integrate them to this thing. And you can innovate in weeks and months, not years of just trying to get the, get the plumbing together. And we're almost astonished um, that after so many years, if you're just down that last slot chart for a second, Jim, but actually, these layers in the middle between the place where we've seen, you know, fantastic open source project, not just the big, the big three with um, Ethereum and Besu and um, and Fabric, um, and then the Corda community, not just those at that level, but you know, a layer above, the sort of second layer of technology, huge amounts of strong open source projects that focus on that area, but actually. That, that's sort of 10% of the overall job for a, for a business um, network that's trying to actually build a solution here. And this center in the middle that's all about that private data, all about the plumbing, all about the integration that happens off chain as much as it happens on chain, that piece in the middle that's sort of between the innovation that's business specific at the top and the core blockchain technology at the bottom, there's just nothing, nothing there that's comprehensive. So we're, we're really excited to be part of the formation of this, Jim, if you just move on to the next slide. Um, so it's, it's Firefly. Um, it's, uh, it's there. It's, um, it, it's in the open. It's a, um, a, a really big engineering commitment to get it started. But we're at the beginning of that journey on the community side, which means that everybody has the opportunity to really be start at the start of um, the transformation that this can, can, can cause. And what Firefly is, is about accepting the reality, the reality that building a multi-party system between large enterprises is about more than blockchain. It's about more than blockchain. And actually, more than anything about else, it's about allowing the developers, web traditional enterprise, API microservice developers, the developers, and the integration teams of these organizations that are trying to get together to build the, build the solution. It's about saying they matter. They matter. Let's make their life easy. Let's make it so that, like they're used to for databases and messaging and all of the other technologies, it's actually straightforward and achievable to develop and build a solution in a multi-party system environment. Let's make the technology serve the business use case and the developers. Let's have a great REST API. Let's have events that you don't need to like be some specialist to decode and understand the hashes to use. Let's have it so that the programming model is easy to understand and easy to describe so that you just get on with building your use case. And let's embrace the fact that multi-party systems are never gonna be just one technology. It's never gonna be just choose your blockchain, like I've chosen Fabric or I've chosen Hyperledger Besu. Like it's, it, it's never gonna be that and I'm done. It's actually gonna be, well, okay, well that's the blockchain piece of it solves, but 
What about the off-chain messaging? Am I using Kafka? Am I using RabbitMQ? Am I using ActiveMQ? What, what am I doing there? Do I need end-to-end -end encryption of that uh, off-chain messaging? Um, what, what about the, um, the shared storage that's too big to actually go on the blockchain? Things like IPFS or Swarm, where do they, they, they plug in? Um, what about the fact that you actually need your own private copy of your own private data and your application needs this fast cache where it can query the stuff and find the stuff. What's the history? How did I get to this state of the world? What, what did I say versus everyone else say? Well, not, not, none of the technologies give you that in isolation. Where's that database fit in that's unique to me and private to me, right? It's not everybody else's data. This is my data. Maybe I share some of it with other people, but I've got my data that I submitted. I've got some data that I've shared. I've got lots of data that I've received from other people. Like that's got to go somewhere as well. Aggregate all of that together and put it in a box. And that's the Firefly node. So Firefly, more than anything else, is about plugins that assemble together all the tech, all the tech that you need to solve multi-party systems. And really built through people like Jim, who've got you know so many years of experience in the um, in in sort of across multiple projects. Um, be that having contributed to all the top three of the of the blockchain ones, but also Avalon and, and these other projects, to actually say, well, just a minute, all of this innovation that's happening, the lines that are blurring between what's a ZKP solution versus a blockchain solution, where does off-chain compute fit in? All of that can integrate into this ecosystem as, as well. And to do it with enterprise-grade engineering, a truly open approach, and um, actually bring all of this sort of production experience that we've got, because we've brought you know these years of, of code uh, along along with it. Well, well, also um, a lot of it is being being intentionally started again in order to make it open and pluggable and to bring the community in. So if you go forwards one more here, Jim. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this t today, but I'm going to talk about Friday um, where we actually have a, um, a much bigger event that you can all participate in and see what's inside of the tech. But we put a lot of effort into the extensibility, getting the foundations there to allow lots of um, parts of the Hyperledger community to come together and plug into this, but also um, allowing lots of innovation um, of, uh, of other projects that aren't necessarily quite so blockchain. So, for example, we're great friends with projects like Node Red, for example, for, for low code, um, low code uh, development of business logic. Like they're a place where they can come together. So, we sort of talk about a periodic table of elements um, as the way that you can sort of plug into the system. And the Firefly node is a microservices architecture, which means that it can take Java code. So, if you've got the Corda plugins, is all, all Java because that's the only way to do it in Corda. Like, well, that can fit even though that core brain is, um, is Go um, now that that's been built in. If you move, move forwards again, Jim. And um, if you, when you when you think about it, this makes it a very very different shaped project. Um, um, one one of the the things that's unique about Firefly is that it's not linked to an individual one of the um, you know what I guess in some places have become a little bit siloed pieces um, sort of spaces of, of innovation in the enterprise blockchain and uh, space. We've actually got projects that started on one of the big three and moved to another one. I'm not going to say which direction they went in. But between uh, Ethereum and Corda, we've actually proved that it's actually genuinely possible to have applications that are one layer detached from the blockchain in cases it makes sense. And, and that's when you're using reusable constructs that are universal, like sequencing. I, for me, it's, it's, it's amazing that blockchain solved one of the hardest problems in multi-party systems that existed the whole of my career of allowing multiple organizations to sequence things in the same way. Like that magic problem, absolutely magic problem. Everyone can have that solved. You don't need to build a smart contract for it. It can come with the technology. Same for NFTs, right? NFTs, really well understood. We know how to do them. As a developer, you shouldn't need to like think, well, just a minute, where, where do I go and get the source of, uh, of an ERC721 form? And is that really the standard I want? Right? Well, you don't have to do about databases. You just have to go, well, where's my SQL query? I'll just, I'll just, just call it. So moving away from a world of everything is like a stored procedure, build it from scratch to reusable patterns. And then the ability to drill down and use the unique features of each of these technologies where you want to. Right? 
You've got some specialist logic that's only available. Someone's built it just for fabric. Great, fantastic. You need the channels of fabric. Absolutely brilliant. You you really like the community um, around tokens and the try by fire ERC twenty standard of Ethereum. Brilliant. Just 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 go and use that. You can drill down and use the best features of these, and it extends more than just the the Hyperledger family. More than just actually the blockchain tax. I mean, there's, we haven't got IPFS on here. We haven't got um, you know. Kafka or all of the off-chain messaging technologies here, but they all can plug in as well. So um, a, a, a project there to serve the real, you know, who really matters in this, which is developers building use cases and to try and abstract where it makes sense, the, the technologies and to definitely make it easier to integrate with these things, right? Make them feel like REST APIs, make them easy to code to. And if you move forward to one more, Jim, <clears throat> also focus on user experience. Um, and we think about three, three very, very important personas inside of the seeding of the, of the Firefly project, right? We're, we're not, not got hubris here. We're not, not trying to say this is done, but we, we do think that we needed to kick off a set of things. And, and there's three kind of personas that we're really trying to trying to get going with the creation of the Firefly project. Um, the first, and I think the most important, is non-blockchain developers. I just want to use you like I use a database. I don't care how the internal transaction replay system of the database works. I just use SQL and it works. Or I just use NoSQL and it works if you're even more modern developer. Give that kind of great experience to developers. And that means they expect tooling that's going to allow them to see when things have gone wrong. So we've started with a CLI comes with this out of, out, out of the box. There's a whole CLI project. Get started in 30 seconds. Do it yourselves. Come along on Friday. Um, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy actually getting started with the tech. Make it really easy. A user experience that actually lets you see what's going on as you're, as you're doing it. Um, see all the coordinations, the ping pong we call it, between the on-chain stuff and the off-chain stuff and how everything um, works together. So a user experience with it. So a big focus on that, on that developer. And then the second, the second focus is on the operational side. So a lot of effort's gone in to make it pluggably uh, from an operational perspective. Think about things like Active Active HA, which get forgotten in a lot of projects after until a long period in. Think about things like, well, just a minute, how does this integrate with my database? How does this integrate with the on-chain stuff? How does it all fit together? And how do I view what's going on? So that's another big persona for us. So that's that's the second one. And then the third one, um, and this really isn't the, you know, this is the best for last, I guess, which is the community. That this is the sort of project we want to unify things. A little bit like the nascent percent potential that Docker had right at the, the beginning, this fantastic transformative technology. It wasn't actually achieved for enterprise until Kubernetes came along. And Kubernetes allowed it to be consumable and work from a from the perspective of um, all of those operational and non-functional requirements that are needed, and to make it really easy. And that happened because of collaboration. That happened because Kub um, Kubernetes is not like a one technology thing. It's a plug point that allows all of the technologies to get to, um, to come in. Um, and and we think. Multi-body systems and blockchain is is just crying out for for that kind of that kind of project, and we, and we don't see it out there. And we we're, we're excited to be what we hope is at the beginning of of really making that community come together. So we expect to see lots of community building here, calls, um, great ways to sort of contribute at the code level, but also to contribute in terms of on the application side as well. Um, to come together to really try and do something sort of net new and interesting in this space. So if you if you move forward to one, and I know we're just at, at time here, um, this is a teaser today. And um, I, I think it will be fantastic for everybody here and tell your friends and share about it. Um, if you think that there's a problem to get to, to solve here, come along on Friday and let's talk about it. Let's see where we've got to with this seed. Let's try it on our laptops. Let's Let's poke at it. Let's see the you know the the the, the potential value of it's here and whether this particular direction is something that's really going to create the transformation that we all need in the blockchain space. And let's get things going. So we've 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 put in 
um, put together a full full uh, half day of activities on um, on Friday with hands on labs, lots of chance to talk to all of the developers. I mean, Collido and to talk about how we take this thing forwards, deep dive into the architecture, deep dive into like where does blockchain fit in, where does the off chain fit in, how do they collaborate together? So I really hope to see you all there on Friday, and also please do share it around because. Um, oh, oh, our feeling is that this is a problem that really does need solving in the space and that we can get together and we can solve it in a really meaningful way. And thank you so much for the, the time today. I guess that wraps up <clears throat> our, our talk. Uh, thanks, Dominic, for hosting us. And thanks, everyone, for, uh, for joining. Have a great day.